These three apartment block buildings around me, they were Ukraine's first line of defense in the southern districts of the city of Bakhmut or Artyomovsk. Among the Wagner fighters, they got nicknamed as the Three Arcs. Basically, they provided perfect cover for their foes. And while well, the battle for this particular neighborhood, well, it was very difficult. You can hardly walk the streets here. Mortar shells were overhead and erupt a few blocks away. An occasional stray bullet whistles and smacks into a brick wall, an overwhelming area of death in which Wagner plays the main part. It was hard to push the enemy out of here. Look at the embrasures on the houses. The enemy was ready for our attack. We had to keep our wits about us. They're clever, removing bricks to make positions for snipers and machine gunners. You can't take them with regular ammunition. We had to use artillery to smoke them out. This is how the enemy artillery targets us. There was a house here. Now there is nothing. Informally, these fighters are known as musicians, courtesy the company name. They are often the first to meet the full force of new NATO-supplied equipment. Kiev's thirst for their blood is unmatched. What you see here is somewhat a novelty on the Donbass front. These are American Claymore mines that have been, well, they're quite legendary among those who play video games here. They are very real and they pose a very real threat. Last week, Wagner's strike teams kicked Kiev troops out of their positions at a local dam. As we approach the new front line, Ukraine spares no ammunition to batter the foe. No caliber is too large. So the dam behind us is the forwardmost and the most avant-garde position of the Wagner troops here in the southern districts of Bakhmut. Basically across the river in the red building, there's already a reconnaissance and surveillance point of the Ukrainian troops. By checking the crates, we know who produced the mines for our opponent's mortar. These boxes were clearly produced in Ukraine. See the labels? All of them are green. These ones are made in the Czech Republic. Somebody else makes the one in these boxes, maybe the Americans. The whole European Union works for them. And you can see the proof here. Here is the dam. You can see what's left of it. Over there in that red two-story house is the enemy observation point. When Kiev forces chose to hole up in the city, civilians woke up to a new reality. Now they were unwelcome guests in their own homes. Mortars, rockets and guns to launch them were spawned in their backyards as an eviction notice. All road junctions and intersections in Bakhmut, even minor ones like here, they are fenced off by barbed wire by the Ukrainian forces. It clearly shows the sort of resistance the Wagner company has to overcome and, well, that the Ukrainian forces have really turned the city into a fortress. Overcoming heavy opposition inevitably comes at a cost. Musicians showcase the price the Ukrainian side had to pay here. Those wounded here died because they couldn't evacuate them, like this one, for example. There were about eight enemy combatants here. A hunger is not a suitable shelter. You can see where the roof caved in. It was a direct hit. Those who could ran away. The strikes moved further down the road. But these two guys couldn't get away. Somewhere there is a third one, buried under the rubble. They couldn't reach their comrades. They left them here. Now they're being eaten by dogs. Wagner troops might be just past the overture to their Bakhmut symphony. There's nary a doubt among them, though, they'll be the ones to strike the final victorious chord. Amir Gajdanov reporting from the Donbass, RT.